the presentation of anarchism, anarchism. a social philosophy which aims at the emancipation, economic, social, political, and spiritual of the human race. The emancipation. Anarchist Essays is brought to you by Loughborough University's Anarchism Research Group. For more information on the ARG, see the link in the show notes or follow us on Twitter at ARGLBORO. Dumpster Diving as Direct Action by Jeff Farrell. For all the decades of my adult life, I've largely done two things. The first one is to think about, teach about, write about, lecture about, uh, try to practice anarchism as both a way of life and a form of political activism and resistance. And the second thing I've done through the decades of my adult life is to, as we say here in North America, dumpster dive. That is to uh, trash pick, to skip dive, as it's sometimes called in Britain and elsewhere, to scrounge through other people's discards. Uh, So those have been the two features of my life, the two defining aspects of who I am and who I've become. But I would like to suggest that, in fact, there are not two aspects, but one really, that the dumpster diving, uh, trash picking as I practice it and as others do, is, in fact, a sterling embodiment of anarchism, uh, especially anarchist direct action. So let me talk for just a moment about direct action. Uh, Direct action, I find, to be at the the very heart of anarchist philosophy and activism. Direct action is the notion that we directly, practically, sensually engage with the world and its problems uh, through our own direct involvement. So if we're dealing with lack of affordable housing, we get to work not on politicians or on policy papers, but on building housing. If the issue is economic injustice, we find ways to directly intervene in a system that creates that injustice. As you can see, the notion is, again, that we do this without the permission or the um, affiliation of the authorities. We don't ask for their help, and we don't ask for their involvement or for their approval. We simply go about doing things on our own. We don't pay others to do it for us or try to organize others to do it on our behalf. Again, we directly involve ourselves in the issues. Uh, There are a couple of other aspects of direct action as well, and one of them is the notion that direct action also teaches us ways of thinking and levels of critique that we could not come up with otherwise. That is, instead of trying to pre-theorize the issue or to imagine what a better world might be from, from within the categories of the present world, we simply get to work on building a better world, and that way often are exposed to or are able to generate new ideas, new perspectives, new insights. So again, much like the notion of praxis, the idea of direct action is that new ways of thinking can come from new ways of practical engagement. And the final aspect that pertains to what I want to talk about here is that direct action also is the notion of collapsing means and ends. The notion that the means we use to try to work toward a better world should themselves be better than the ones we currently use. The notion that if we want to achieve justice, we work toward it in a just way. If we want to achieve democratic a democratic society, we work toward it democratically. And so again, direct action is the idea that how we go about changing the world will also in some ways be the way in which that world eventually changes. That's a lot to, uh, (laughs) a lot of framework to try to impose on something as seemingly simple as uh, pulling items out of a trash bin. But let me now see if I can make that link with uh, what I do every day. Uh, Every day uh, for two or three hours a day, I go out on my bicycle and Uh, dig in trash bins and uh, dumpsters and trash skips. Um, This allows me, first of all, uh, direct engagement with and rebuttal of consumerism. Uh, Consumerism, as the defining aspect of late capitalism, is, of course, predicated on the endless selling of new goods, the creation of needs and desires, the obsolescence of that which we buy. And, of course, that means that much of what we purchase ends up discarded, not because it's broken or not because it is unusable, but simply because it's unfashionable or has been replaced by a, quote, better product. So in this way, I'm able to actually intervene in the consumerist flow toward the landfill and divert much of that landfill to be uh, into my life and into a source of uh, survival. It also means direct uh, action against environmental harm. 
uh, over a year's time, I s literally salvaged tons of materials, uh, perhaps more on that later. Some of them are uh, scrap metal that's taken to the scrapyard. Others are materials that I use or, or repurpose. So once again, rather than organizing a campaign that asks politicians to pass better environmental legislation, uh, direct action suggests stopping the flow as best I can or we can between ourselves and the landfill. Another real advantage of this is that I end up with literally all that I need. Uh, my home, uh, my garage, my shed, <laughs> uh, my yard are filled with the items that I uh, scrounge. I almost never go into a store at all, uh, only occasionally for beer or food, <laughs> but otherwise everything I have I have found uh, clothing, boots, firewood, tools, plants, kitchenware, uh, toiletries, my dogs, <laughs> both are, are dogs that I found on the street while out scrounging. I suppose I salvaged them as well. So to use Chris Carlson's term, this for me is very intentional, assertive desertion, as he says, from uh, capitalist economies. I choose to uh, desert my role as a consumer and as best I can to assertively and aggressively become a non-consumer who's able to live in a do-it-yourself, uh, self-contained fashion. And also, by the way, this gives me all sorts of other advantages. Uh, one of them is that this is, introduces daily uncertainty and surprise and spontaneity. I never know what I'll find. I'm forced to deal with whatever I do find to learn how to repair it or how to take it apart or how to make it workable, what to do with it. Uh, it teaches me all sorts of skills. I'm a much more skilled uh, carpenter and plumber and craftsman than I was many years ago because I've had to learn that and, and enjoyed learning that as a way of dealing with what I find. Uh, and it also uh, teaches me to be generous because there is so much out there and, you, and so much to be saved that one realizes how transitory our relationship is with objects and how much we can simply let go of our sort of covetous desires to keep them for ourselves. But here I'd like to turn it in a whole different direction and suggest that actually it's not really about me. <laughs> it's about uh, a more of a social phenomenon, dumpster diving. And that is that when I said I find all I need, actually I need to amend that. I find all I need and much, much more. The vast majority of what I find does not stay in my life, but goes elsewhere uh, through a series of networks that, as Kropotkin would say, the great anarchist Peter, Peter Kropotkin, uh, are defined by mutual aid. Uh, again, for Kropotkin, and for anarchism, mutual aid is not top-down charity. It's not uh, sort of helping those uh, who have less. It's more a matter of creating autonomous, self-sustaining communities by sharing and uh, sharing resources and engaging in mutual uh, benefit and mutual aid. And what this has helped me do, and in fact, what dumpster diving does is not only contribute to mutual aid networks, I would argue, and I'll say in just a moment, that I think it actually builds those networks. It actually builds new ways of sharing and living in the world together through uh, what dumpster diving makes possible. Uh, in the media, as I've gotten some coverage there, I've often been called an urban Robin Hood. That's a bit too romantic. But it is true that really what I do each day is bicycle through wealthy neighborhoods, take from the rich what they have uh, unthinkingly discarded, and get it to the poor. So again, a direct form of wealth redistribution or resource redistribution. I want to say again, not asking a politician to please help do that for us, but simply redistributing it uh, on our own terms. So for example, in the neighborhood where I've now dumpster dived for the past 20 years or so, I've gotten to know countless homeowners and shop owners who have come to trust me as a sort of steward for their discards. So I help clean up their trash and take care of their trash bins. Uh, they in turn put things out for me or point things out or warn me about sharp glass or other objects. Uh, they look out for me. I look out for them. I would think, I think their businesses are healthier and more sustainable because of my role in helping them with discards. And of course they help sustain me as a trash picker. Uh, friends and neighbors, uh, are supplied with goods. I strongly encourage them to come take whatever they want from my vast stock of tools and parts and appliances. And so this keeps them from going to the store. It keeps them from going into debt. Uh, it helps them survive outside of a consumerist identity as well. Again, and by the way, they now bring me things as well uh, in my old pickup, which I occasionally use. The word has gotten out in the neighborhood. If you have an old scrap piece of metal or an appliance that doesn't work, just put it in the back of his pickup and he'll find a use for it or rebuild it. 
a local independent bicycle shop where I've gotten to be close friends with the uh, proprietors, helps me stay on two wheels by repairing my bikes for me and helping me assemble bikes from scrounged parts. I, in turn, take them the kinds of office supplies and mailing supplies that are helpful to their business because, of course, the dumpsters are full of mailing supplies and cardboard boxes and packaging and this sort of thing. A local musician friend of mine who is a brilliant guitarist, but of course doesn't get paid as though he's a brilliant guitarist, uh, is the beneficiary of much of my resources. I help him out with all sorts of things. He, of course, in turn provides me and others with a beautiful soundtrack to our lives. If you want local music, you've got to find a way to sustain local musicians. Uh, the food that I find goes to the food bank. Uh, each month, roughly, I take a truckload in my old truck of goods to a homeless assistance agency because I've learned that they need backpacks and boots and jeans, and so those are taken there. Uh, other sir, other goods go to refugees agency, refugee agencies. And in fact, just yesterday, I took an entire truckload of brand new infant and, and uh, uh, baby uh, supplies to the local women's shelter, the supplies that had been thrown out uh, while a building was being remodeled. I jumped in their trash bin and found them and took them to those that need them. And perhaps the purest form of anarchist direct action is a box at the end of my driveway uh, with the word free written on it. Uh, uh, much of what I find, I simply put in that box and that box has been there now for many years and people have learned if they're in need, they can stop by and take what they want, but they can also leave what others might need or want. And so the box has become its own kind of social phenomenon. It is self-reinforcing, self-filling and self-emptying. <laughs> I find all sorts of, the, uh, sorts of things in there when I check it each day. I find things that have been taken that I've put in and things that have been left by others. So the box has again begun to begun to build a kind of community sharing mode out of its very existence. Now the knowledge that there's no rules, no stigma, there's simply the possibility of giving and taking uh, freely. So it seems to me, as you can see, that dumpster diving is far more than simply picking things out of the trash. It is a kind of anarchist direct action. It's a form of resistance to consumerism and to the laws that define how we must dispose of things and to whom uh, they must go. It is certainly an act that for myself and everyone I know is embedded in networks of mutual aid, networks that make us all more independent and autonomous from the state and from capitalism while also building community. Uh, the Wobblies, the great uh, and our anarcho-syndicalist union uh, uh, who, with whom I've affiliated and about whom I've proudly written, uh, often talked about building a new society within the shell of the old. It seems to me dumpster diving allows us to build a new society from the discards of the old. It allows us to begin to form new ways of being in the world and new ways of sharing and supporting each other from within the very structures that would inhibit or prohibit that. It seems to me it also shows that anarchism is doable. Anarchism is not simply a pipe dream of a perfect world, but a set of strategies and orientations and moral stances that allow us to directly engage with the world, to escape as best we can the bounds of authority and domination, and to build new communities out of our own decency and generosity with others. But that's enough, uh, enough of that. I've got to go. Uh, I've got to go you know where, <laughs> to uh, another round of dumpster diving and trash picking. Words are good. Uh, direct action, I think, is better. To quote the Wobblies one more time, the IWW, direct action gets the goods. It's time for me to go get the goods. Thank you for listening. To help others find Anarchist Essays, please rate and review us wherever you find your podcasts. And if you're interested in anarchist ideas, why not check out the journal Anarchist Studies? For over 20 years, Anarchist Studies has been publishing original research on the history, theory, and practice of anarchism. For more information, visit www.lwbooks.co.uk forward slash anarchist studies.